heroism. It's the pursuit of two ideals, excellence and a higher purpose. This noble mission is not just found in Hollywood. It's a game changer for businesses devoted to it. Almost all business owners launch their company to make a difference in the world around them. Join us on the heroic experience as we talk with business owners, senior leaders, and established entrepreneurs so that you too can elevate your business to heroic success. Now, here's your host, John D. Hansen. Welcome back to the Heroic Experience. We are grateful to be sponsored by Kaufman Media. Check out their digital signage solutions and far more on their website, kaufmanmedia.com. That's spelled C-O-F-F-M-A-N media.com. I am so happy to have Lisa Stroth. She is a voiceover artist and owner of Vocally Yours as our guest in studio today. And Lisa, we always start the show off the very first segment with a couple, a handful of wow client stories that they may have never heard of you before. Mm -hmm. And then you come in and do voiceover work and they're like, wow, where have you been all our lives? <laughs> so welcome to the show. We'd Thank love to you. hear some of those stories today. Awesome. Well, it's really good to be here, John. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so um, I guess one of the first stories that comes to mind is I had a client who owned a marketing company, okay. came to me and he had a client who was, uh, I think, Japanese. I know okay. it was international. Okay. And they were trying to sell their product here in the United States. They had created a marketing video and had used artificial intelligence to both translate and voice this video. <laughs> okay. It was horrific. <laughs> they knew it. He knew it. Uh, the translation was awkward. And the, the AI was just, it was very poor. So Just putting it bluntly, you know, horrific is yeah. a very strong descriptive <laughs> adjective. Ooh. So his question for me was, we'd like to use the video, but redo the audio. Can okay. you separate those out? Mm -hmm. Well, it, it turns out that that's not a difficult process, but at yeah. the time I had never done it before. Okay. So I said, well, um, <laughs> sure, mm -hmm. I, I can do that. Um, give me a day or so uh, that I've not done that before. So I, I did the research. I mm -hmm. figured out, sure, yes, I can do this. Um, and I got back with him and said, I've been I've been able to separate them out. Do you have the script? Uh, actually, no, I don't have a script. We oh. have to use the AI and what little bit has been captioned on the video and then some of the information on the slides to develop a script. Oh, can you help me with that? Mm. <laughs> um, sure, I can do that. <laughs> so we worked together, we developed the script hmm. and it turned out really well. Mm. The client was very happy. Mm. He was very happy. Um, I learned something new. A couple things new in that right, process, right. separating audio from video. Yes. And again, it's, it wasn't it wasn't a difficult process. It's mm -hmm. just something I had never done before. Right. So he was very happy and he used me again for another project that was much more simple. <laughs> Thank goodness. <laughs> Not long after that. So that was that would be one. Uh, story. <laughs> well, it's very picturesque when you use the word horrific. I'm like, oh, I can imagine. If you could just hear the A. Oh, it was awful. It was a woman's, <laughs> well, in a quotes, woman. a yeah, woman's a voice. voice. Yeah. Uh, very robotic, <laughs> very, and the the phrasing was so awkward. Mm. Mm. So, but well, it you turned made out a well. world of difference, no pun intended. Made a world of difference in their entry into the U.S. market. What's another story that comes to your mind? So another one, it's a, another hey, can you do this for me? Hmm. And it was not in my wheelhouse, but sure, I'll try it. So I hmm. had a, uh, there a, was a company that um, has some web-based physical therapy products and services that okay. they do. And okay. I'm going to try to keep it sort of generic, but yeah. um, their salesperson was looking for someone to voice a an educational program that they were developing for one of their products. Okay. And he looked on LinkedIn. He found me and listened to my demos, hmm. liked what he heard. And then he saw, oh, she has a physical therapy background. Oh, this is perfect. Yeah, yeah. So we talked for a while. He told me what the project was. I said, yes, I'm, I'm interested in that. And it then got to, 
has the project has the uh, course already been developed or if it's not if it hasn't been do you have a timeline right. so that I can sort of put things on my schedule and know when I'll need to get started on this right well no it hasn't been developed yet can you do that <laughs> <clears throat> excuse me and I said well uh, I've worked in physical therapy I worked in a I taught in a physical therapist assistant program mm-hmm. and actually <clears throat> excuse me developed the online courses that we had our all of our didactic portion of our classes went to an online setting so mm. I had to develop those courses I said yeah. I, I've also developed uh, some courses to educate people about products and services that the company I worked for uh, prior to becoming a voiceover artist mm-hmm. um, I developed those courses so it's not completely new but I've never done anything like this I mean I was very upfront with him yeah right and said, I've never done anything like this before. Mm-hmm. I'm willing, if you're willing, to try it. And they weren't looking for anything complex. Right. It didn't have to have a lot of bells and whistles. It just needed to be engaging yeah. and interesting and informative. Okay. I said, I, I think I can do that. We had a online meeting with all four members of their ownership team. Okay. And the one who was the founding owner said, why are we questioning we're not looking for somebody else. She's the one that we want to work mm. with. So we knew it was going to be a rocky road. Sure. They had never developed a course. Okay. I had never developed a course. Okay. We learned things along the way. We navigated some rough waters. And at the end, their marketing guy said, this was so much more work than you thought it was going to be, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. And I said, yeah, yeah, <laughs> it was a lot mm-hmm. more work. And had it been some, something that they required more complexity, I would have just said, let me find an instructional designer for you, mm-hmm. someone who can do this really well. But I was, it, it turns out I was able to do just what they were looking for. And it was a four hour long course. Ooh. They came back within a month and said, we'd like to add some modules. Uh, can you do that? Mm-hmm. Sure. Sure. So now... Eight months later, hi, we're back. We have another two projects oh. or two other services, and we would like you to do the same thing. Hmm. Can you do that? We were really happy to work with you. Um, you were patient with us, mm-hmm. and you provided a good professional product that people who have used it, who have watched that and gone through the educational course, have said it was interesting, and hmm. uh, they they really enjoyed it. So. Again, not something that if it were more complex or a, a topic that I was not familiar with. I with, had a right, background yeah. in it. Yeah. And they provided information for sure. me, uh, their educational material. So. Yeah. I think that's helpful. Uh, up again our, against our first break already. Man, time flies. Rich, Sir Richard Branson said, say yes and then figure out how to do it after. Yep. I've seen that <laughs> quote I don't know how many times. <laughs> But, I will put this big but in here, but it's even more helpful if you've got at least experience or Mm -hmm. familiarity with whatever Mm -hmm. that thing is. Even if you haven't done that specific skill Mm -hmm. of putting together a course, you had the background in physical therapy, so you at least had understanding of the terminology, of the processes, of the points of pain, no pun intended, (laughs) of all those things where there were fewer hurdles you had to come over Mm -hmm. in order to make that happen. Right. So while there's a learning curve, it's not as steep if you have familiarity. So uh, that's a little dash of wisdom I'd throw in there of like, just say yes and figure it out. <laughs> well, we're up against our first break. Join us back at the second where we get to hear Lisa's story. Inspire, influence, and connect your audience with digital signage. Kaufman Media offers customizable digital signage solutions designed to meet your company's specific goals. Whether you need digital menu boards for your quick service restaurant, digital displays for marketing in your retail stores, or wayfinding and unified communications for your schools, your corporations, or your healthcare facility, our customizable, affordable options and proven experience make us the only partner you'll need for your next digital signage project. Visit KaufmanMedia.com today to learn more. That's C-O-F-F-M-A-N Media.com. Would you buy a car from a dealer without a test drive first? 
For your business, a consulting partner is even more important. Accelerated Revenue is excited to announce the Take Us for a Test Drive event. Receive two exclusive workshops on customer experience and winning culture, a customized culture snapshot, and a leadership strategy session worth over $10,000, all in for just $2,500. Best of all, when you onboard our consulting team, we'll credit you the entire $2,500. Spots are limited, so visit our website today at accrev.com slash test drive. Check out John's worldwide selling book, Wow Your Customers, Seven Ways to World-Class Service on Amazon. Now, once again, here's John. Welcome back to the Heroic Experience, where we are committed to elevating your business to heroic success. We're grateful to be sponsored by Kaufman Media, digital signage. It's all around us everywhere we go. Find out how it can help you communicate even better with your team internally and your customers externally. Check out their website, kaufmanmedia.com. That's spelled C-O-F-F-M-A-N media.com. I am so happy to have Lisa Stroth as our guest in studio today. She's a voiceover artist and the owner of Vocally Yours. This is my favorite part of the show, Lisa, where we get to hear your story as far back as you'd like to go. All right. Well, it can be kind of a long story. and <laughs> We have nine minutes. And I am a storyteller, so yeah, I, I try to keep it a little concise. Yeah. So... Uh, well, I'm the oldest of three. Okay. Uh, I was always a good student, an A student, all mm. through school. In high school, I learned that I was actually very interested in science mm. and did really well in those courses. Okay. And in the mid 80s, I'm aging myself, of course. <laughs> in the okay. mid 80s, there was a, a big push to encourage young women yeah. to enter the science yes, careers. Yes, STEM, right. Um, other, so in, in, careers in addition to nursing, the ones that had been traditionally female. Yes, right. So my mom was a nurse mm. and uh, I was always proud of that. Mm-hmm. She uh, would tell stories that were interesting and fun, but there were also <laughs> yucky things that <laughs> yes, she had to do. And I, I, I'm sure. I didn't want to have to no. draw blood or do any of those. So, <laughs> uh, but when the guidance counselor and my teachers knew how interested I was in science and that it seemed to come naturally, they encouraged me to find a field in science. Okay. Uh, Ashland University had a program uh, in toxicology that was relatively new, Hmm. had been just a few years, uh, going for a few years. And so I entered into that program. Hmm. Uh, It could be a good preparation for pharmacology school, which was something that I was kind of interested in. And to be honest, there really wasn't anything that I felt mm. passionately. This okay. is what I want to do with my life. Mm-hmm. But it, it seemed to make sense. Everybody yeah. said I should go right. into science. I so I you. went into science. My yeah. mom was a nurse. It just made sense. Mm-hmm. So I, I entered the program. I earned my bachelor's degree. I worked for about four years. Okay. Uh, and I did some work in a, a research facility. And then I worked at uh, what's now LabCorp. It was oh, yeah. called Roche Biomedical at the time. Okay. I worked for them. Okay. Um, but about four years in, I realized this is not what I want to do. Mm. Now, mind you, I had been a rule follower my whole life. Okay. So the idea you. of I've just spent four years mm-hmm. and a lot of money <laughs> to earn this degree, and now I don't want to do this anymore, <laughs> felt wrong somehow, yeah, I you know? You. I so, you. so I actually, I, a lot of prayer, mm. and I decided I want to go into physical therapy. Okay. So I went to Shawnee State in Portsmouth, hmm. got a degree as a physical therapist assistant, hmm. and started work at a small rural hospital where mm-hmm. my mom actually still worked as a nurse. Oh, cool. And so that was that was fun. And yeah. because it was small, mm-hmm. they had a physical rehabilitation program within the hospital. Mm-hmm. And I had the opportunity that not every physical therapist assistant has to work with nurses, occupational therapists social workers, speech pathologists, and the physician for the physical rehab unit. Mm -hmm. So I was able to get a a more well-rounded perspective and approach to patient care. Okay. Which really impacted how I treated patients, Mm -hmm. and it impacted how I taught. I was invited, I guess, uh, to become an instructor in a physical therapist assistant program. Really? And so I took that unique experience with mm-hmm. me and taught for four years 
in that program. Hmm. Uh, my pharmacology background from my toxicology degree came into play as well. Okay. I added a small pharmacology component to one of the courses that is not typical in mm-hmm. a PTA program because I felt like it was important to know these patients that we're treating maybe on medications that will impact mm-hmm. how our therapy affects them and maybe we need to do their therapy in the morning instead of the afternoon or vice Interesting. versa. Yep. So we added that component and um, I found out that I really enjoyed teaching. Mm. Um, and um, I also found out looking at a video that I use my hands a lot when I talk. And I knew <laughs> That's this. Okay. That's okay. <laughs> was, well, it's interesting in the booth when you're right. waving your hands around as you talk. I have multiple times hit the microphone with my finger. I've done the same thing because so, I'm animated. I don't want yeah. to sit there and be a head that doesn't move and only the right. mouth moves. Like nobody's interested. In no, that. nobody no. cares to see that. <laughs> yeah. So I did that for about four years, <laughs> and in the meantime, had moved. Uh, I I remained in the therapy field, uh, working in therapy while I was teaching. I felt like it was important to be current. Yeah. So I had moved to an outpatient setting, and I decided after about four years of teaching. I think I'm just going to go back to full-time therapy. Hmm. Well, it turns out that I was still kind of restless. I was Hmm. not unhappy in Mm -hmm. any of the jobs necessarily. I just wasn't content. Yeah, I get you. And um, at one point, this was probably about 15 years ago, I had a patient come up to me and say, I've been listening to you educate your patients and just tell stories. And he said, you have a great voice for voiceover. Hmm. And my actual response to him was, huh, Hmm. Um, thank you. I don't know what that means. (laughs) So he said, really, I used to work in the industry. I think Mm. you should look into it. I did. It wasn't something that I could afford coaching or anything like that. And it had never been something that had been even in the back of my mind. Right. So I blew it off as a a nice random compliment. Hmm. Mm -hmm. And I had been a singer. People had said things about my voice before. Mm -hmm. So I just thought, well, just somebody who thought I had a nice voice. Right. Well, over the next year, it became clear that God had a plan. Mm -hmm. Uh, There were Mm -hmm. some other things that happened that indicated, okay, this was not just random and I should look into this. Mm -hmm. So I started taking some coaching and was just taking a class here and there as I could afford it. And that was even a God story there because most coaches will not allow that you pay a fee up front Mm -hmm. you get your coaching and i had someone who was was happy to work with me Mm. which was definitely a blessing yeah so um in that time i started to have some problems with carpal tunnel syndrome Mm. and with my neck and Mm. that was making the physical component of my job a bit difficult yeah so my boss had an administrative role that she said you'll be perfect Mm. for this um I moved into that role and Mm -hmm. a large component of it was marketing the services and products that Mm. the industrial rehabilitation portion of our company provided. Okay. Now I thought and still think that those were the best services and products in the industry. So it should not have been hard for me to market it. It was something I believed in, but I hated marketing. Mm. I hated it Mm. and found out that, you know, this was not what I wanted to do either. Mm. And, uh, I know you hear the music. I do hear the music. Those of you may not be able to hear this when you're listening to the show, but we hear in our ears here in the studio the soft music that a break is imminently approaching. So that's fine because we still have nine and a half minutes on the other side of the break, so we can hear the end of short. That's okay. We can hear the end of the story because we know we know what you do, and we can find out where to get a hold of you. But we really would like to hear. We're almost there. I feel like to this story. So here's what we're gonna do. We're going to come back after the break. We're going to finish hearing your story, and then we'll find out best ways to contact you, where you're found, what you've got going on. There'll be plenty of time in nine and a half minutes to do that. So join us back after the break so we can finish Lisa's story and hear some ways that you can get a hold of her to add a vocally yours component to your outreach. Join us back. Did you know that 70% of U.S. residents 12 and older recall seeing digital signage in the past week? Digital signage provides a 35% reduction in perceived wait time with a 30% increase in a customer's in-store browsing time. Kaufman Media offers customizable digital signage solutions designed to meet your company's specific goals. 
Christina said, We love our digital signage. The software is easy to use and we can publish content in minutes. It allows for every department to be seen and have a voice. Visit KaufmanMedia.com today to learn more. That's C-O-F-F-M-A-N Media.com. Attention event planners. Is your company or association planning a conference, seminar, or staff retreat? Are you looking for fresh ideas on high-demand topics like customer experience, leadership, empathy, customer service, earning, and keeping trust and more? Then you need to book John D. Hansen as your next speaker. Brooke said, Great presentation. John's concepts help shift my thinking. A good fit for my life right now. Read more testimonials, discover John's full list of speaking topics, check out pricing and more on our website, accrev.com slash keynote. Would you like to be a guest on the Heroic Experience? Contact us at john.hanson at accrev.com. Now, once again, here's John. Welcome back to the Heroic Experience, where we are proud to be sponsored by Kaufman Media digital signage solutions and far more check out their website kaufmanmedia.com that's spelled c-o-f-f-m-a-n media.com happy to have lisa stroth voice over artist and owner of vocally yours as our guest in studio we left you hanging after that last segment so we are going to wrap put a nice little bow tie on this oh well i don't know bow tie a little bow uh <laughs> on this story we get to hear the end of her story as well as learn a little bit more about what she does and how that's important for your business so we would love to hear you are you're working with a voiceover coach. Mm-hmm. You're in an admin role in physical therapy. So and but you didn't like marketing, even mm-hmm. though you were doing it and believed in the mm-hmm. product mm-hmm. and service. Where did it go from there? Well, it wasn't very long after that that I felt like God was saying, It's time to leave hmm. and to, hmm. to move into voiceover full time. Okay. And my response was yeah, I don't think that's a good idea right now. <laughs> that's a little risky. <laughs> I'm not really ready for that. And the Lord said, well, I am. Mm. So mm. Uh, I took a huge leap of faith yeah. and I left. Yeah. I still had coaching to finish, a website to fi- to build, mm. a studio to build, and I had no clients. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nothing major. Yeah. Yeah. No risk at all to that. Yeah, that's a big move. Yes, yes. But in the... I have learned so much about myself, about my faith, Mm. um, about asking for help from Mm. other people. Yes. Um, I've had some really great mentors and coaches along the way Mm. and uh, have met people that I never would have met. And what I have found is this really is a calling for me, Mm. that voiceover is a foundation for speaking and motivating other people. Mm. Um, There's a book that's inside of me that God is pushing for me to get out of me. Um, So uh, what I've learned is that I, my purpose Mm -hmm. is to glorify God by using my voice Mm -hmm. uh, to educate, to engage, to encourage, energize, empower. And um, that's, that's what I love to do. Mm -hmm. And I have found, I've heard, had people say, I learned things that I didn't know I wanted to learn listening to you. My Mm -hmm. brother who hates anything that is related to medicine, science, healthcare, whatever, mm. said, I listened to your whole demo and I learned things about the kidneys that I, I, I didn't know. Mm. So I have found that an engaging voice, mm-hmm. a friendly professional voice, yes. someone who is trained to, in vocal delivery skills mm-hmm. is key. Yeah. Uh, for an educational or training video. Mm-hmm. It's often the first voice that you hear uh, when a person calls into your company. Right. Uh, you're, if you have a voicemail, if you um, if you have pa- uh, clients that are on hold, I say patients because healthcare comes <laughs> I know, back in. right. That's the bulk um, of your life. I if get you have it. <laughs> clients who are often on hold mm-hmm. and you're only playing music, mm-hmm. you're probably wasting some marketing space. Mm. So you could have someone who was talking about the services that you provide. Right. Or s- reviews or customer testimonials right. or employee testimonials right. or things like that. But in a voice that's well, a lot of people don't like their voice or don't want to have their voice recorded. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But if you can do it through someone who's skilled at it, mm-hmm. who enjoys it, it's it's a gift. You know, mm-hmm. a, I would say this too. For people that are listening to this and they feel, you were talking about restless in the Mm -hmm, second segment, mm -hmm, right? mm -hmm. You feel like, I'm not ungrateful, Mm -hmm. but I feel like this isn't it. And not even unhappy. No. Not even unhappy. But just this, there's something more. I don't know what Mm -hmm, it is yet, mm -hmm. but I feel like there's something, I haven't identified what my calling or life purpose is. Well, don't be in a rush for that. Don't feel Mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. just because social media tells you, you should know. You know, everybody's journey is different. Mm-hmm. Everybody's time frames are different. 
So if they if someone had told you it, it in your 20s, you're going to be a voiceover artist. You'd be like, <laughs> whatever. I think not. <laughs> yes. <laughs> nice try. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I would say this. Um, the You need to be patient about that. Life has to kind of work its way, mm-hmm. uh, particularly if you're a person of faith. It has to work its way where you as a person are being developed so that you can take the best advantage of that opportunity when it's presented. Absolutely. Because very often it's not like just put in your lap and a with a nice pretty bowl on a silver platter and life just gets so much easier. That usually there's a bit of a step of mm-hmm. faith mm-hmm. and usually there's a stretching and a learning process involved even if, okay, so that's my life calling now. How do I work that out? Right. Well, and I, right? when I felt like I was, and I do still feel like I'm on the right path mm-hmm. and sometimes I think, well, God, if you called me to this, why isn't it easier? <laughs> but honestly, I, I wouldn't have it any other way. Yeah. And, you know, it, I have actually come to understand that my voice is a tool mm. to help other people convey their message, to bring yeah. that message to life. So mm-hmm. when I work with a client, their message becomes as important to me as it right. is to them. Right. Um, I do a lot of healthcare and medical related. So the my website, The Voice Over Cure, that tagline mm-hmm. is a nod to my healthcare experience, mm. uh, but is also... I'm the cure for whatever voiceover need you have. Now, mm-hmm. I'll be honest with you. Um, there are certain genres that I'm not qualified for that mm-hmm. are not in my wheelhouse. I'm not a broadcast kind of voice. Hmm. Um, and there are things that I don't enjoy. But if it's healthcare related, if it is faith based, uh, marketing, message on hold, mm-hmm. any of those, um, audiobooks, nonfiction audiobooks. Okay. Um, Okay. Because there's a specific genre within voiceover of doing character voices. There are mm. people s- incredibly skilled at that, and there's specialized training for it. Right. I'm not that person. <laughs> well, <laughs> so, it's better to identify what you n- are not going to do, yes, what you don't enjoy. Because it allows you to focus on those things focus. that... Focus, yes. ...where you are skilled. Rather than trying to be everything excel. to everybody, right. and nobody can do that well. Right. Yeah. So what are some ways, you mentioned your website, let's mm-hmm, touch mm-hmm. on that specifically, but where else can people find you along with your website? Website and then where else they can find um, you? I'm on LinkedIn mm-hmm. um, and I think it's just Lisa Stroff voiceover. It might just be, you can find me under Lisa Stroff, mm-hmm. uh, Instagram, mm-hmm. Lisa Stroff VO. Okay. Um, I'm under Vocally Yours on Facebook. Okay. And they can email me, Lisa at thevoiceovercure.com. Great. If they have questions. Yeah. Um, and I'm always happy to chat. I, I tell people I'm an audio billboard for their mm-hmm. product, their project, or their services. So mm. you see a billboard. Yes. And, and it's memorable. Yep. And. And it's just part of your drive. Like, right. Like right. They know that when they strategically place those. So it's the same thing like the answering message, the greeting message mm-hmm. that like that's billboard space, audio billboard space. If people are on hold. What experience are they having, right? Mm-hmm. Is it just mm-hmm. elevator music or is it an AI voice mm-hmm. that's not a real person? Well, uh, and if it's a training program, you want people to remember mm-hmm. what they're being taught. Yeah. If it's a marketing video, you want people to stay engaged so that they respond to your call to action. If it's an audio book, you want people leaning in and coming back for more. So... Those are the things, the skills that I have learned and honed and refined. And the voice, that was God's gift for mm. his purposes. And I'm happy to use them, use it in that way. Um, but, it, you know, and I, I have a studio in my home. Mm. So I'm able to provide a quick turnaround. Um, yeah, within 24 hours. Yeah, typically. That's amazing. All right. So we are, time has flown like it always does on these great conversations. So we've got about 20 seconds left. Somebody's in that journey. They, mm-hmm. They've mm-hmm. now discovered, all right, this is my life calling. This really resonates with me. This is what I should be doing. What's the one thing that you would give as a piece of advice when they're just about to launch into that? Into voiceover? Or into whatever into is whatever. their thing. Yeah. Um, I think find people who are already doing it. Mm. Get information. Find somebody who can mentor you yeah. in that. And um, if you're a person of faith, definitely pray mm. and and know okay this is this is the next step you know take and and that's it too take it one step at a time mm. and know that's that it's going to come in small pieces yeah 
Well, thanks for being our guest, Lisa. Thanks, John. Join us back on The Heroic Experience, where we are committed to elevating your business to heroic success. This has been The Heroic Experience. To learn how your business can be profitable and heroic, visit accrev.com. For access to free weekly content, subscribe to the Accelerated Revenue YouTube channel and follow John D. Hansen on LinkedIn. To listen to archived shows, find them on the Accelerated Revenue website under the Resources tab, accrev.com.